Hello everyone, welcome to Brush Sauce Theater episode 16. In this episode I have uh, my friend Oscar Greghorn here and he will be uh, doing a painting demo on his technique here. I, I saw his work on Draw a Crowd here, as probably many people have. He's pretty popular on here and um, he's just going to be kind of showing us his, uh, how he goes about painting a, a scene with such uh, vivid colors. Uh, he has a really distinctive style and I'm always on on the hunt for uh, new and upcoming talent and so I would love to, to show uh, off some more uh, techniques because I'm sure everyone's sick of watching me paint right now. Uh, following his demo will be a uh, the the contest uh, judging for a brush sauce theater community page. Alright we're gonna begin um, the painting process here with Oscar and he's gonna kind of explain to us what he's uh, been doing and since he seems like he has a real solid uh, workflow with a lot of his recent paintings. Yep, I'm starting here right now. Just painting blue sky, blue sky method. I don't know if you know what that is. But yeah, do, do um, you have, did you have like an idea before you start a painting like this? Like a general like direction you're going to go to? Or do you just find something from all this chaos? Uh, I usually start from the chaos, but I might have like a mood or maybe an idea of something, but it's usually just from the chaos. And as you can see, I'm just blowing down colors and uh, shapes, and at the end, it's usually works. That that's a really uh, fun, chaotic way to work. And yeah, you can just pull from your previous paintings and put them on a weird uh, blending mode, right? And see if you see anything interesting. Yeah, as you can see, I just put on my previous paintings, and usually it generates like lights and uh, colors and everything. And, and I actually have all the values and all the colors usually. On the canvas, so I can just pick it off. Yeah, you you you, you, you have a in your your a lot of your recent work anyway. You have a really nice set of uh, vivid colors in many of them. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, that's that's the for that process because yeah, as you can see, I'm just layering on top different works, and uh, as you can see, I think I towards the end of the video I will uh, layer on top another painting just to get uh, <laughs> <laughs> just to get another uh, sense of. Yeah. So that that's why I love to feature all the artists on here, especially something like you, because your workflow is so different from my own, and it, it's really awesome to see how you know other guys um, come about making some paintings like this. Yeah, I know a lot of people use line art, for example. I, I'm just, the yeah, I'm just, I just like I'm maybe I overly plan a lot of things, and I, I would like to loosen up a little bit, such as yourself, like this. It's, it's really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It's worth trying. <laughs> At least trying it. Do you find that, that you've probably what well, painted both ways? Do you find it more or less stressful to kind of just paint from chaos or to go in more with a plan? Well, at this stage, it's very stressful because I have no idea what I'm going to paint. Yeah, and it informs it unfolds very quickly. You can see it's almost a painting right already. But uh, in the starting process, it's really stressful. But towards the end, you know, you have everything going on. And uh, that's not the same as line art because you have to generate ideas and forms and everything doing line art. So yeah, yeah it's a, it's very different at least. This is kind of like a very fine art approach you have early on here. Do you, do you, is there any kind of method you go about to choosing your your colors like this, or are they all, are they just whatever you can quickly grab and they're almost random? Yeah, they're almost random. <laughs> <laughs> I just grab whatever is on the canvas, and that's why we'll see like pink grass or. Like yellow grass. Yeah, and so on. yeah. As I didn't know if you had um, like if you pre pre made like color swatches on the side or anything. Some people wonder that sometimes, but yeah, this is just total chaos, then, huh? Yeah, it's total chaos. I have no swatches. I know, for example, Feng Su. He uses swatches, I believe. Yep. And I don't do that. <laughs> it's all natural. Uh, and as you can see, I'm also painting like, painting on one layer, which is mm -hmm. also kind of different from most people, I believe. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people who make a lot of layers. Yeah, and uh, it's just neat to, to organize it. Just yeah, I find. On there. Yeah, definitely when working on fewer layers, the the kind of the pixels and you know the the paint basically reacts to better with you know layers of the paint. Like when it's on one rather than when you start mixing them over several layers, like it it kind of just it feels more natural that way. Yeah, it does. And uh, yeah, I know a lot of people tend to use like blending modes just to get that painterly feel. But as long as you use just one layer, it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. And as you can see here, I'm resizing the canvas because I just want to get a different composition. I wasn't entirely happy with the composition, so you know I'm leaning everything towards the right, now towards yeah, the left. 
and yeah, I guess you, you're working in, you know, the you use is you know vivid as the colors you're using. You're still keeping some of the fundamentals in check, such as you know atmospheric perspective and the the value structure. Yeah, I'm not using a uh, perspective. I know a lot of people struggle with it, and I'm kind of in the same boat. I don't really. I haven't gone to an art school, mm -hmm. so <laughs> I haven't got that drill of perspective. As most people get, but it's it usually works out, and especially in environments like this, like natural environments, it's not really no. Yeah, they're they're definitely the the ones I enjoy painting the most because they're the easiest for me as well. Yeah, those little structures, and you're just painting rivers, mountains, and all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, and you usually want to get like some kind of design, especially when if you want to work as a concept artist, for example. Mm -hmm. You want to. Like include some design in the painting, and uh, if you use line art, for example, uh, things tend to get very stale. Yeah, it's so like that's, yeah, that's it's like when you're figure drawing, it. or you're you know you're putting figures in a scene. You want to kind of over um, exaggerate their pose because when you go to rework them, uh, it gets a little more stiff every time. So yeah, yeah, if, you, yeah. if you start off much more expressive, then even if you were to refine this over several hours, it you still have a solid foundation to work from. Yeah, that's exactly why I use the process. <laughs> you tend to stay things when you repeat them. Yeah, I, def I definitely know what you're talking about when it comes to that. Because I, I was on my recent piece I'm doing now, I'm, I do sketch up, so it's very, very structured, un like underpainting that I'm going to use to, to set it up in it. I'm at the point now in it where I don't want it to look as stiff as it does, so I have to go back and make several different lighting passes on it to kind of liven it up. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't like that workflow. I've tried to sketch up like once or twice, and I understand it, but it's it's not fun. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. It helps yeah. me figure out um, to do complex interiors. Basically, I I don't use it for much else. No. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's definitely no real application of Sket, uh, SketchUp or any any 3D application in in terms of this content you have here. Just wouldn't yeah. be necessary. And especially in such a large landscape, because if you if you are in the Lux Crenis, for example, mm -hmm. of a small town, you almost you have to use a 3D program. But yeah, but here it's not necessary. So <laughs> definitely, that's why my landscapes are so huge. <laughs> What, um, in case anyone was curious about what resolution would you start a typical canvas like this? This is about 3K by 2K. Yeah, that's, that, that's what I usually start about too as well, about 3,000. Yeah, but is I it, usually, good... it up, I usually yeah, it's usually like twice that mm -hmm. at the end. And I scale it down by 20, uh, 2 25%, so the, <laughs> the final image internet to guess to see is like 25% of that. So you're, like, you, um, I didn't get it. Will we be able to put your uh, brushes available for anyone that wants to download and try this method out? The thing is, these are not my brushes. I just downloaded from the internet. I think they... But that's fine. You, would you be able to send me the set of them so I can host them on the link for the YouTube so people can try them? Yeah, I can see if I found them. <laughs> I guess I'll do that. Because I, I, you definitely have some interesting brushes here. I know I'd like to try. Yeah, I like this brush a lot. <laughs> it's like the only brush I use for this painting. Yeah, I can see a good mix of um, like hard and soft edges you have going on here. <laughs> I usually also spend like LMAC uh, lines at the end of the painting, but I didn't do that for the video. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll do that for like the finished product that I posted on the internet, but I'll wait and see. Uh, that's only a filter, though. So that's really not a line up either. Uh, I think I'm, uh, I snipped the process from uh, a guy named Pascal Blank. I think mm -hmm. if you know what I, you know who that is. Yeah, we can we can include a link on that too, so people can see. Yeah, but he he has a very like uh, 3D style. Oh. And he do characters, right? So yeah. So just to make them more comic and more lively, he just applies a filter that basically does line art, and that's what I used to. And oh, you do that at the end? Yeah, I do it at the end. Fun. Yeah, I, so, I, I do that too occasionally. Yeah, it just, I don't know, <laughs> it looks kind of cool. And yeah, that, it, yeah, I forgot what filter, was it the, is it the... Um, it's the edge detection, I think. Yeah, yeah, find edges, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's and fun. I just put it on a second layer. I duplicate this one layer, and I put the found edges. I think, and I like put it on a layer mode, depending on what type of painting it is. And it usually turns out nice. So that's really neat, right there. You 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 copied the whole canvas, and you you pasted it in uh, several times. Yeah. Yeah, I do, I do several times. I've seen just a lot of guys doing some stuff details. like that. That's really cool. Yeah, just to get smaller details. <laughs> when you have something painted, it's, it's yours already, so you don't have to paint it again. <laughs> That's right, and it saves yeah. time. So you can just reuse it. And it's not really noticeable either, because I stretched the canvas. So do you have... Um, I, since this just looks, it reminds me of something so traditional. Do you have a background in traditional painting at all? No, not really. Oh, wow. I just like the look of it, and uh, I try to paint like it. Yeah, you definitely got that down. <laughs> well, thank you. This is a lot of the the issues I see, especially with um, more of the, the novice uh, digital painters, is that the colors are just so stiff and rigid in them, and you, you certainly don't seem to have that issue at all here. No, it stems from the chaotic process at the start because most people just start off in one color, maybe mm -hmm. two colors at the start, and when they blend them, it's usually just monochromatic or diachromatic, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and as you can see here, I'm also layering in another painting that I've done previously, just to get that second layer of detail and that second layer of color and value. Yeah, because it looks like you already have. You're gonna work with the. Um the structure of the painting as it is, you have a real solid foundation, now you're just gonna refine it, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I do. And I'm doing it again here, just to get... And yeah, and this must be like um, a good um, exercise for your you know, imagination, because it, it's just about finding shapes and, and colors and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly it is. And uh, the more you Look at art, for example, look at Deviant Art, maybe not Deviant Art, but uh, Draw Crab, for example. Art Station is like really good right now. Yeah. Lots of good art there. And uh, the more you look at art, just the better you will, will become at just uh, finding shapes and just randomness. Yeah, I definitely like to build compositions almost strictly out of shape design. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun also. It's the most fun process I've found, at least. Yeah, and, and it helps you kind of think of the, you know, the more like, like the situation as a whole. Like, you're not starting out with one little, like, you know, really small on the canvas trying to work one idea. You, you have to think of, like, the whole thing and make it work as one more or less, like, kind of cohesive um, piece. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people use this method. Uh, Feng Suis, obviously. <laughs> one of those guys, but a lot of people use photo bashing, for example. And yeah, I'm, I'm not really that fond of photo bashing. I did, I have used it some in some paintings, but it's uh, very minuscule and just to get that. Yeah, you photo bash your own stuff. Yeah, right. I do. <laughs> that's that's photo yeah, Well, why would you need photos? You got you got enough paintings now to work off with. You you can just photo bash them. Yeah. I've seen a lot of the Guild Wars guys do some similar methods. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the Guild Wars stuff. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I can see that too. influence in your work here, for sure. Yeah, you can. yeah. Theo Prince what, is... And Theo Prince, definitely. What, what are you, what do, would you have any other main um, influences you'd like to mention now? Well, Thomas uh, Schultz, I think. I uh, know they how to pronounce his name. I talked to him on Facebook, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thomas Schulz, I think. Yeah, Thomas Schulz. Yeah. He's uh, a really cool dude. I love his work. Yeah, he's really cool. I like wish uh, I could get some uh, of those. There's also another guy that on um, that did the Guild Wars stuff. I think his name is Ron Gia. He's not that well known, but it's it's his art is really good. Yeah. It's really solid. Lots of amazing colors and that's what I love. <laughs> yeah, your stuff also looks a little it reminds me of uh, Richard Anderson's stuff. Oh, I don't think I know what that he, is. <laughs> he, he's a Guild, War, Guild Wars artist. You, you'd probably oh. recognize his stuff if... Yeah, probably. He's like, <laughs> like you said, he's one of those guys. I don't see him like throwing his artwork like all over the place, but um, his stuff's very familiar for those who have seen it. Yeah, probably. I probably seen it. And uh, here I'm also throwing, uh, throwing in very weird colors, like really saturated purples, and uh, I mm. think I'll also use some greens, just to get like weird colors, color spectrum, and because... This is 
it's not really too good right now. I don't really like the painting right now, mm -hmm. but just throwing in more colors and as you can see now, I'm throwing in... Uh, when in doubt, throw, throw more colors in, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the... That's the rule. You can always pull it back at the end, but yeah, like a, a lot, I think a lot of the guys these days are starting off with a lot more vivid colors and then you kind of paint in, in and away from them to, you know, just as a solid foundation. Yeah, right. And uh, also just painting out, you know, desaturating the, the other colors that's a lot in the focal points. Yeah. Because that's really everything uh, you need to see in a painting is the focal point. Like you're all right, you you don't you're probably in the same camp with me on this thought, but you don't need to detail the heck out of everything in a scene to have a, a strong looking concept or painting. You know, no, just really just need. detail, but just add detail where it's important and let let the other stuff kind of recede into um, nothing. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> suggested exactly suggested right. detail anyway. Make it look yeah. like you did more than you actually did. <laughs> And also right here, I'm throwing in a very saturated, I think it's a cyan or... Yeah, that's yeah. you're totally rocking that cyan up there. <laughs> See, I thought that looks really cool. And I, like, I know personally, I would have never thought, let's just pump up some cyan up there. But that looks really cool. And it, it like reminds yeah. me of some of those old like adventure games we used to play like in the mid-90s. Like That's really cool. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah, lots of people just forget about cyan. I have no idea why. Yeah. Nobody uses cyan. I'm glad someone out there showing some cyan love. Yeah, it's a cool color. It's definitely my favorite color, I think. And also here you can see I'm just popping in weird colors in the background yeah. just to get some kind of noise. It's so, really cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, you can see the yellow and the greens in the background just to get noise. And, and then see, like at, at this stage, you can't even really, if, if you weren't watching this, you probably couldn't even tell. You probably dumped like six paintings into that, like on top of it. Kind of warped and abstracted. Yeah, you can. But but the but the detail is like clearly evident in some of the the, the structures there. Like you can see yeah. little bits of them peeking through, and that's yeah, I think probably, yeah, that comes into the suggested detail we were talking about. Yeah, you could probably shift this away to a client if you had to. Yeah, you could. Concept. Like look at this. How how well is it doing? And then they give you feedback and maybe they make refinements on it. And I, I don't really know how far into the painting this is. I think it's like an hour, maybe. Mm -hmm. A bit that's but like an hour. Yeah, you can probably pump out something better than this in an hour if you use paint, uh, full textures. But just the painting, it's, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I, I just love it. I don't know. I think some of my favorite guys probably don't use any photos at all. I just, I just love a nice painted quality to something like that. Yeah, but it takes time. <laughs> it, it does. But on, on that note as well, if you if you're just starting out and you're jumping into suit like heavy, like almost like Feng Zhu style photo manipulation in your work, so it won't help you grow that quickly. No. And it'll probably uh, mess you up for a while. As yeah, I think so too. Like the speed painting uh, community, for example. Yep. I just recently did a speed painting, and uh, a lot of other speed painting where just smash every photo in the world in the painting just they to do. get something out. And it doesn't look good. No, and, and on top of that, at least for me personally, it gets really stale to look at after, you know, half the people out there are just manipulating the heck out of photos. And Yeah. You have, you know, you, it's like how you're manipulating the colors and the paint. Like, I think to be like a, to stand out as a heavy photo manipulator these days, you'd have to do something so different and personal with it to stand out otherwise it's gonna they're more or less all gonna start looking the same and your style will you, you just won't have that great a sense of a style yeah you don't have a style at all <laughs> and there's a time and a place for it like you know if you're working in for movies and they need stuff like really realistic i get that'd be a perfect place to do it but yeah but you also have to have the fundamentals down because a lot of those people just smash photos on top of each other and yep. there's no fundamentals and there's no values it's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that that's what I've seen, and that's why I was glad we talked about this. Because, like in the in the brush shots community group, there you can you can tell when a few people don't have a, the strongest understanding of the fundamentals, because they will they'll they'll post some work, and I'm not singling anybody out, you know, specifically, but the just the values on it will be really really um, rough and need like the most improvement. I think is when people start using the photos, that the values are the first thing that go and that you lose them and then you can't read the painting from far away. Yeah. And uh, right here I'm throwing another painting. 
and uh, it destroys the value some of the created, but just erasing a lot of it away just creates detail. So yep. that's <laughs> that's kind of the idea of the uh, just drawing in paintings. Because I have the values in place already, <laughs> it kind of looks good. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> you do. You you just do the structure of the painting, so it, this this is working for you. You should. Yeah, you're, you, I mean, you grew. You know, as an artist, I watched over like the last six months, like so much, and it seems like you're painting every day. Is that is that true? How how often do you paint a day? <laughs> Not every day, but I paint a lot. Every yeah, lot. I, I do look at a lot of art too. And that's a. I think that's a big room. part of it that I don't think a lot of people just talk about. That it's almost you know it's nearly just as important to look at a lot of good art. Yeah, it's probably more important. I would probably look at the more more art than I paint. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm totally guilt that, guilty of that myself. <laughs> it's just it's so inspirational and it keeps you up to date with what's you know trending or what's really popular, and it also just serves as such a big source of inspiration and where to get some ideas and yeah. And a lot of people talk about studying, studying people, and studying masters. You know, mm -hmm. but just looking at random art is just good. <laughs> yeah, I was never. I, I do, I jump into a study once in a while, but I don't like to excessively do them because they're, they're probably one of the most boring, those next to still lifes for me, like the most boring academic type of like exercises you can do. Yeah, you have to keep it fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, keep going. Well, yeah, like, it's, it's, sorry, I was interrupting, you finish. <laughs> it's a 10,000 hour rule, right? You have to put in hours, and if it's not fun, you, you're not going to put in hours. And exactly. You're going to stop. Like if I was going to do a master's study, I would just take maybe whatever subject matter or color scheme that they were having and I'd recompose everything to try to make my own picture and try to apply what, what I was taking away from their painting to it to make at least something a bit more original. Yeah, that, that's, that's how I have to go about it. Yeah, that's what I did anyways. I haven't done really any studies at all. I just put <laughs> it the option. <laughs> but whatever, whatever works, there's, there's no right or wrong when it comes to this stuff, that's for sure. Yeah, there's a hundred ways to get good. <laughs> That'd be uh, like a good blog post or something. A hundred ways to get good. And then <laughs> maybe. I don't think the right blogs, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think someone else has to do that. This, yeah, this is really coming together now, though. Yeah, I think it's, it's like two hours in, maybe. And I did I did spite it up at the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. At the end, I did like finished up. Uh, with drawing some of, uh, shadows some and video. some reflections. Because, yeah, Camtasia doesn't, uh, it had to stop. And <laughs> yeah. To not lose the recording, I had to stop. I, I know how that is. Yeah, <laughs> I had some problems, but it worked out in the end. So, so it just looks like you're polishing up the, the last bit of shapes up there for the background. Yeah, and I'm also hiding a lot of the, of the details. Um, yeah. You know, because a lot of it is nonsense. You can see like the lines on the rock to the side. Mm -hmm. It's just nonsense, it doesn't work. And so I usually hide it <laughs> just to get uh, some of the style. But yeah, like for, for every bit of nonsense you get with this method, though, you get like lots of good happy accidents that just like, oh, that works really well there. And then you can just paint yeah, over it. Working, working on happy accidents is <laughs> that's all I do. <laughs> There's no lines, just happy, happy accidents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see I'm also uh, correcting the values right here. Yeah, as you go. And you're still working on one layer, I've noticed. Yeah, <laughs> it's all one layer, I think. Just uh, on the fog, a lot of people tend to make another layer for the fog, but I just use the... Uh, yeah, I, I, make, I make two layers for the fog sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people do that. Yeah. But it's uh, you have to do that in some circumstances, because yep. if you work with... Photographs, for example, you can't just smash it on the top. It doesn't work. No. <laughs> but for this style, it works. So I'm kind of lucky. I chose that style. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it it has a lot of personality, and it's definitely very unique, which is, I mean, your work definitely stands out, which I think is one of the hardest things anybody has, you know, these days. It's just like, you can make good work, but does it stand out at all? Yeah, and you have to make people remember you, which is kind of difficult. That is, that is true. Well, uh, it's just it's nowadays more than ever. It's with you know, there's so many upcoming artists popping up. It's just oh, it's it's really hard to stand out and get a good reputation. 
yeah, <laughs> I'm working on that. <laughs> yeah, it looks like I you're doing just fine, huh? Because, because you're you're you're, well, you're really young. I think right. What are you like, sixteen or so? Yeah, I'm, I will be sixteen on the twenty fourth so of you, September. You're so fifteen I'm right 15. now. Yeah, I'm fifteen. <laughs> Holy shit! That's... See, guys, we got to get to work because Oscar's gonna come and take all our jobs in a few years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in three years, and I will be taking your jobs. <laughs> wow, I wasn't even like doing any art at all when I was your age. This is so awesome that you got such a head start on things. Yeah, you'll find it, it. It will pay off. Like I think I was still playing with my action figures when I was your age. <laughs> and I'm my Spider Man and my Star War guys, and I was setting up wars and stuff I, I mean that's what i was doing at your age and you're like just so ahead of the curve here <laughs> yeah i try to be good <laughs> and uh, i also try to be very i try to stand out <laughs> that's yeah you, you do you're doing a really good job with that <laughs> well, thank you and you can see i'm just layering lots of different colors and just painting up the details because mm -hmm. You have to do some details. You can't just leave it. Everything sloppy. And, and I, I noticed, like you know, when you go in, like on an area like this, you're basically unless you're making water to separate it from the rocks. But when you're working on just the rocks, you're you're, you're staying pretty much in the same value range too. No matter how much you change the color, which helps keeps the structure of the painting. Yeah, I do change some of the some of the values because you know some things mm -hmm. will have, you know, shadows and stuff. I don't really deal with that because it doesn't really look good if I. Had to draw in like really sharp shadows, for example. Yeah, like super, super high good. contrast. You've tried that with this style or approach? Yeah, but I haven't released anything. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely, yeah, this definitely has, uh, has a nice lower um, contrast type of aesthetic to it. Uh, a lot of people deal with lighting, but I just don't really care. <laughs> as long as the work do, it looks good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah it's, it's all am like ambient lit. Yeah, it's all <laughs> ambient lit. And uh, also the waters kind of threw me off in the lighting <laughs> mm -hmm. because it's like really little bright in the waters, <laughs> and it it doesn't work if I had to like throw in shadows over the water and it would just look bad. Yeah. Well, look at that. you got like you got some intense pinks going on. Like it, it, parts of your painting is really cool. It's just like someone took a paint bucket and just dumped it down your river that you're painting. So it's really cool. Uh, it's pretty much <laughs> the thing I do. Like I did it here and again, and just to get those oranges in the back and uh, just mm -hmm. weird colors, just weird, weird things. I like weird. <laughs> yeah. Did you find that uh, this method of painting just purely from experimentation, or did you start like with a different style and then progress to here slowly? Or to tell us how you got to arrive to this type of method. Uh, I just stumbled upon it. I think I did it. <laughs> I was just. Because you always had to try to make your work faster because that's the business, right? Yeah. That's <laughs> and uh, I was just mashing paintings on top of each other and it worked out. So I think I thought it looked good and mm -hmm. <laughs> I just decided to paint it. And that's like one of the uh, paintings I did, um, you know, with the trees and the, like the red yep. circular things. Yeah, that's, that's those paintings. So it turned out kind of, kind of good. And I liked it, and people like it, so I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you've been getting great feedback on these so far, haven't you? Yeah, people people love them, so I'm not going to complain. <laughs> uh, but it's really just all about the details right now. Yeah. You can see I'm just <laughs> throwing out that extra layer of detail, because the work looks kind of sloppy right now. That's okay. That's part of its charm. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you can see that. <laughs> yeah, it would like it would lose it would that it would definitely lose some of its character if it was just super prettied up in in areas. Yeah, that's also the tough part with the lighting because if I was gonna go in and just light everything, it it wouldn't look good. I mean, it would it would yeah. lose the charm. So. <laughs> so you got the blues in there. There's just such color variety. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you've seen the process now, so... Yeah, I w I've been waiting to see how you make one of these images for a long time now, so this is a real treat for me, and I hope everybody else enjoyed it as much as I have. Yeah, I I'm sure they would. So that, that's like the, I would say, it would be one of the top lessons anyone could take away from this, is if your color, you don't want your colors to look as stiff, it's to really use co variety 
in the colors. Like if you're gonna paint like a whole wall and you know it's gonna be a brick wall, just don't fill it with red with like a paint bucket. Like use like several, several colors to make that red. Yeah, you can see on the rocks in the middle here, there's like reds and there's like mm -hmm. purples and greens and there's every color. <laughs> so that's the lesson, I guess. So do you, do you have a favorite subject matter yet that you like to, you prefer to paint? Mm, I really like, like these weird forests. I did, weird forest. Did a, yeah, I did a couple of paintings like that, but mm -hmm. people people don't really like when everything is the same, so I have to yep. like, vary things up. Like I really don't like architecture, though. <laughs> it's it's difficult. It, it's it is a very difficult. Like I, I'm 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 so sick of painting forests right now myself. I I would be totally happy if I didn't get a commission for a forest for the rest of the year, so I could just work on some other stuff. Yeah, and also here I'm throwing in some atmosphere just to balance out the mm -hmm. values and just make those three rocks in the foreground stand out because they weren't really standing out. Did you use the use the airbrush tool on the color dodge? Uh, mode it looks like. Yeah, I think I did that. <laughs> I also used the saturation uh, tool. I think it, it it's the guy that looks like a sponge. I think. Oh. You know, on the side, mm -hmm. and it it can saturate and desaturate. So I used that just to make the uh, the focal point, which it's not really focal point right now, but just the parts in the middle more saturated than the parts on the sides. See when I when I look at it really uh, quickly or take a glance at it now with some of like those those I know the yellows are probably the ground but it it also is starting to look like I could my eye can visualize structures little structures based on like on the side of um, these mountains. Yeah, that's kind of the beauty of the style because you you do throw in a lot of just uh, your own ideas and your own. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, the painting. Yeah, yeah, open interpretation. Cause, yeah, that's the only thing that I, uh, you know, personally, I haven't seen, you know, to anchor my train of thought in this so far. It's like a, a a point of reference for the scale. So I could be looking at, you know, a little stream where these are these pillars here are like you know five feet tall, or I could be like really far away and those are like hundreds of feet. Hundreds yeah, of I feet guess high. that's a part of the interpretation, though. <laughs> yeah, that that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a lot of ways you can look at this. Yeah, I guess so. I don't think I threw in the figure, but <laughs> that's that's the interpretation. Yeah. I also did uh, blue up the sky. It's mm -hmm. really white right now, and uh, I think it works. I yeah, it definitely does. Just to make those rocks in the foreground stand out. <laughs> you get the cool little water lines too. Oh, those brushes look fun. I gotta try those. Yeah, I'll, I'll link them to you. Because I'm guessing uh, yeah. you're, you're probably like me and just downloaded sets of them from all over the internet and then just kind of compiled a bit of your favorite ones. Yeah, I have a lot of brushes <laughs> and I have some favorites. I uh, That's one thing that I don't think many people use is the color dynamic uh, setting on the brushes. I don't think a lot of people use them. Yeah, a, a lot of people probably, I would guess, use a lot of layers, so use the, the dynamics with the, the layer mode. Oh yeah, but since well, I'm painting one layer, yeah. Since uh, you're on one layer, it's you can basically only use the brush setting to change. Yeah, but it's really flexible because I can set like the saturation or mm -hmm. the color and everything. So that's kind of good. <laughs> it works out, especially for this style, which is kind of messy and lots of colors everywhere, mm -hmm. just to get some variation in the color. Yeah, so, I like it. <laughs> so, what what kind of scenes or subject matter um, do you see yourself wanting to paint in the near future that you haven't got a chance to yet? Mm, that's kind of a difficult question because I I get inspired all the time by just mm -hmm. being outside, for example, or being just looking at art on the internet. So, <laughs> whatever catches my mind or catches my inspiration, I tend to paint it. Yeah, you seem like you're very spontaneous with what you uh, go on and paint. Yeah, I, I, oh, yeah, yeah, you can see it in painting, for example, <laughs> it's all spontaneous. So that's that. Well, I remember those days. Those are good days. I miss, I miss that. Now I gotta like, I never, I don't have much time at all for my personal stuff, and when I do, I over plan it. <laughs> so it's, it's yeah. just I miss kind of being that kind of free and spontaneous with it. Because now, if I like at where I am, if I, I wanted to do something personal, I want to definitely try something I haven't yet. So I'm like, look, th look through all my my pictures. I'm like, what haven't I painted yet, or what color scheme haven't I tried? And I'll I try that type of method. Yeah, but you have to paint what's fun for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just 
go about uh, painting what you haven't done yet. Uh, I say a lot of people are just painting the same thing over and over. Yeah, how many how many like sci-fi cities or mech suit drop suit guys do you see like on your Facebook feed a day? There's like yeah, what, right. thirty of them. <laughs> yeah, so I, I wouldn't be too worried. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can paint the same thing over and over. Nobody would care. <laughs> I, think. I know. Uh, Keeping it fresh, that's... one stroke at a time. That's what you're doing. Yeah, that's what I do. But that's also kind of the thing you have to worry about when you're a concept artist because I, I think a lot of people want to be a concept artist. That seems like the dream yeah. job for a lot of people. And uh, you have to be aware there. You can't just paint the same thing all, over and over. No, <laughs> you definitely have to have... You, they generally say you have to be able to paint anything from any angle. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not really too good about that. Which That's I think, why. well, you know, a good artist with reference could could do that but um yeah it's definitely hard to draw something if you don't know what it looks like to begin with so yeah that's a lot of yeah that's why i have to be a little bit visual library mm -hmm. <laughs> just to get you have to know what everything looks like and i know a lot of people use reference and i think everyone uses reference yeah i didn't i didn't really pop up any reference for this picture in particular because it's not really that difficult of a motif it's just <laughs> some yeah you're, you're you're in your comfort zone which is totally cool for something like this yeah, uh, I wouldn't want to push myself for a recording. That's, yeah, that would be bad. Yeah, like I, I can definitely like. I, there's some paintings of mine too. I like wanted to paint, but then I like looked at it and I reworked something twenty times, and I didn't have a clear direction on what I was doing, and I just would have made the worst recording ever. So yeah, it's definitely, definitely cool to <laughs> to do a recording of something you're comfortable with. Yeah, you have to stay in a comfort zone sometimes. Yes, you do. And also, right now, I'm throwing in some folk just to get those values mm -hmm. nailed down and just make the focal points even <laughs> better and more, yeah, focal. <laughs> focal down. So the, the one thing I got to ask when you're doing a, a, a painting like this is, like, when do you know when to stop? Because it seems like you can just always go in and add more colors or hints of detail somewhere. Like, for you, when, when do you usually, is there any kind of indication in a painting? that you can pick out that it's telling you, all right, I'm going to overwork this, or it looks done? Yeah, I usually stop at the five-hour marks, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's like a good time. Yeah. If I, were, I know a lot of people who paint like for 30 hours, and <laughs> that's just way too much for me. Yeah, I, I have myself, and I, I get really bored with a piece after about 15 hours. Yeah, 15 hours is way too long for me, too, so... And it usually works out with this style, so <laughs> it's all messy. Yeah, that, that definitely. You got you're making everything work for you, which is good. Yeah, and I think this is like maybe three hours right now, mm -hmm. so it's not even five hours. I could go on for two hours more, uh, but it wouldn't look too much different because everything is really nailed down right now. And yeah, all the values are in place and all the colors, so. <laughs> I I think you've pretty much got every color on the. On the color picker in there at this point, look at that, you got everything. <laughs> but it reads though, so it, it's working. Just because you got the yeah. values right. Yeah, you, get, you have to get the values right. And that's really what I struggle with, like in the start, just yeah. get the composition and everything. And, and the values, of course. <laughs> but compos composition is also very a key point in painting. Uh, you can see, like, yeah, I have the foreground and mm -hmm. I have the midground, I have the background. So. Yeah, you have clear distinction between the the planes of field. Yeah, so it works out. <laughs> it definitely does. Well, yeah, uh, I think we're. Yeah, we're getting near the end, so I definitely want to take this opportunity to thank you for coming on and showing everybody your process. Yeah, it was a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, it's been a real treat, and um, I'm sure some some people will see your work and want to. Go back and check out your gallery now to see how chaotic you can get with these things. So, yeah, thanks yeah. for coming on. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, just a slight adjustment. Just because the uh, I did the the judging with Adam Duff and it took a while, and I said it would come right after this. L. I'm going to have its own separate episode just for that. It's over an hour long and it's really in depth. So we'll just move on to the user question, which comes from uh, Diggity Dan uh, over on YouTube and. Yeah, so when blocking in color after doing a gray scale uh, tonal values, do you just use an overlay layer or uh, a, multiply, a multiply layer? And I generally use uh, a combination of both. And I'll, I'll try to show a quick demonstration of that. All 
Alright, so if this is my scene here, and let's just go back to the old uh, trusty sphere. Well, this isn't the perfect sphere, but it'll work. Let's just fill it with gray. Fill. And we'll basically render this in um, black and white, and then we'll, sh then we'll see what we can do to add color. I'll just keep this super simple. Maybe like a simple overhead. And uh, kind of get around the shadow side. So that I add a little sphere. And yeah, screen. Just a bit uh, stronger. And of course we need some bounce light in there, right? So maybe... Just a little bit like that, and... Some extra... Extra dark shadow to cast it off. Alright, so we have a sphere here. What if we want to color this? Um, he asks using the multiply and overlay layer. So this happens with a multiply layer. Let me... I made a new layer set to multiply. We set this at like a red go over it it'll fill it fill it in and it's kind of like you know it, it gets darker based on the the existing value so of course up here it's gonna be the lightest and you go, every time you go over it, it gets darker 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 and then um, if I'm gonna use the same effect with an overlay layer it kind of goes uh, it keeps the value pretty much same as it is, but this one gets multiply will get darker. Overlay will generally keep it um, the same. So, as that relates to your painting, well, you can use both in combination, even. So you can do that, bring it up to here, um, and then you know go back and erase it even where you want it. I, I do this is how I do it. I've done, I've done entire scenes this way, um, and I showed that in. The Castle Town banner painting I did. I had the whole thing uh, in black and white, and you know, it was like this. Uh, pardon me a sec. Slight layer crisis. Alright, let's just say we had a mountain range here, like this. This is our picture plane. And we're gonna fill that with gray, because we'll, we'll say we started this image in grayscale, right? A little darker on top, we have some mist down here. And then Maybe we will have another set of mountains. Right, and then, um, well, let's say maybe we got a, a castle right here. It's my, here's my fun little castle. Not that fun, let's give it a tower. A little tower coming off. So I'll multiply, here we go. And we just want to color this thing uh, quickly, maybe. So, crop it. It's a little scene. Uh, you can do it like this. The sky is not perfectly white as I have it here. They, they, they wouldn't be that bright, ever. So. A little darker up top, lighter at the horizon, right? Now let's do this a bit more correctly. And overlay that with blue. So you can always it's already getting the getting the atmospheric uh, perspective in there. And what if we want to tone that with a green? Green for the grass. Well that's a terrible green, isn't it? And it gets so you can just you can start an image just basically using an overlay to tone it. Well, what it, and then maybe you want to get the colors deeper, richer. Then I'd say make the multiply. This is just what I do. It's not necessarily right or wrong, but see now multiply allows me to get in there really dark. But uh, yeah, that's generally about it. There, there's nothing 
you gotta use whatever works for your style and, and technique. See, since I blew out the lights on there, I can go also go back on the multiply here and add uh, the blue in the background. And then, you know, make a layer on top. Maybe you want to go to the screen and get some of the warm light, the warm colors back. And so it's really just a combination of using all the layer types as you need them. So I hope that answered your question, and thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care, and don't forget to tell your friends.